fentanyl lollipops? This has to be a joke. It's not. It's really not. In fact, it's very, very serious. Fentanyl, fentanyl and I have a very love-hate relationship with each other. There's a lot of really awesome, unique things about fentanyl that you don't see with any other chemical. Well, not many other chemicals anyway. But uh, people get too excited about it, and I'll explain why here in a moment. I'm Grant Harding. I'm a licensed pharmacist in three states, and I like to review medications for you guys. And today we'll be talking about a very interesting molecule, fentanyl. What is it? How does it work? How do you get it? Why are there lollipops? <laughs> and when is it best used? All right, crash course on things about stuff. Your skin exists to keep chemicals out. That's why God put it there. People think that you can just take any chemical, any medicine, and make a patch and put it on, and then you'll be good to go because there's nicotine patches, uh, there's oxybutynin patches, and there's fentanyl patches. But it really depends on the structure of the molecule. And fentanyl just so happens to be like one of the best. In order for something to pass through your skin, the molecule has to be small, has to be uncharged, and it has to be lipophilic, meaning it has to be dissolved, dissolvable in fat, but it can't be too lipophilic or else it won't dissolve in your blood. So it has to have that right ratio between it can dissolve in fat and also blood or water, but it can't be too far in one extreme. Additionally, as is the case with fentanyl, not a lot's going to be absorbed, so it has to have an action, has to be very potent. A little bit needs to make enough of a reaction in the body to get what you want to get. Not all medicines are like that. Some you dose in micrograms, some you dose in grams. Fentanyl you dose in micrograms. It is small, it is potent, it is good to go through the skin. But even a patch needs some help. So at a fentanyl patch, and I wish I had one here today to show you, it actually has a reservoir of fentanyl in it. It has, I don't know, I checked, I don't think they disclosed this information, but it has a ton of fentanyl in this little bubble on the back of the patch. And that is there for a specific reason. Fick's law of diffusion basically says areas of high concentration move to areas of low concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. And there's actually two in a fentanyl patch. It's the membrane of the actual patch itself, and it's also your skin. So I, I really, honestly, I still struggle with this. I don't understand how the area of low concentration knows that there's something else out there that is high concentration, but somehow it knows, meaning that chemistry in nature, you want equilibrium. So if you put a patch with a ton of fentanyl on it, your blood is going to say, okay, we need to correct that. This, this has to be equalized. And our pharmaceuticists have developed uh, the patch in a membrane, and they fill it up to the perfect amount of fentanyl so that it releases the exact amount of fentanyl that they want per unit of time. It's really an engineering marvel, if I'm being honest. This, by the way, is why you cannot cut a fentanyl patch. You it would destroy that membrane and you would get so much of the medicine all at once. I mean, if it's not fatal, it would be dang near close to it. Also, uh, a really important counseling point, you cannot put heat on the patch. That affects diffusion. It increases the rate which the molecules are going to pass through that patch and into your skin and into your blood. So if you're in a hot tub, that could be fatal. If you put a heating pad over the patch for whatever reason, that could also be fatal. Take a look at the molecule, folks. This is the fentanyl molecule, and compare it to a morphine molecule. They don't look very similar, but there's really important parts, and these are the important parts that make it interact with the mu opioid receptor. Does it have a tertiary amine? Yep, right there. Is there phenolic renes? Is there hydrophobic areas that can interact with the mu opioid receptor? Yes, there's quite a few there. There's also a point um, that there needs to be like Oxygens are some like kind of negatively charged ion pointing out of the receptor, and there is one here. Uh, morphine, for example, has three. Um, but this, this makes a stronger binding to the opioid receptor than the morphine molecule. See, medicinal chemists can play with this stuff. Maybe they could swap out an oxygen for another nitrogen or something, uh, change the amount of phenol rings. I don't know. There's lots of different things that you can play around to sort of make more um, stronger binding or weaker binding or perhaps binding to other receptors as well. There's a lot you can do here. It's honestly an amazing art. All right, well, what about these lollipops? 
that's got to be unethical, right? Well, it kind of is, but not for the reason why you're thinking of. So here's what they look like. Very industrial looking, right? They're not like flat. Like, there actually is a lot of sugar. And in fact, <laughs> there's a warning in this product for diabetes. Like it's going to mess with your sugar. So this is great for folks who have cancer-related pain. But, I mean, this is obviously very dangerous. Pharmacies have to go through training. Prescribers have to go through training, like special training, that they understand how this works and how to prescribe it. So what the patient does is they open up the package, obviously, and they put it between their gum and their cheek, and they just kind of let it dissolve there. Now, why the heck would anyone want a fentanyl lollipop? It comes in an injection. It comes in a patch. Uh, wh what's the point of this? Well, if you need quick, short-acting opioid relief from cancer-related pain, this is a great option, especially if swallowing is an issue. The patch takes a couple hours. That's not going to be okay if you're having a pain attack and you need relief now. I wanted to make something really clear, though. I, I stated earlier that the patch is overloaded. It has a ton of fentanyl in it. I don't know how much, way more than what you need, so that it pushes through the membrane and into the skin at the exact rate that we want it to be at. Well, the lollipop's just a lollipop. It's not overloaded. It just dissolves in your mouth. What's the difference? Well, the cells in your mouth are not the same cells as your skin. These are much more permeable. So a lollipop is going to dissolve, and it's just going to have, I would assume, passive diffusion through these mucosal cells. Additionally, there's a high amount of blood flow in there, and it gets into your system quickly enough that it is effective. The company that makes this lollipop, though, got into some serious trouble not too long ago because I said my words here very, very carefully and appropriately. This is for acute cancer-related pain. That's it. You can't go to a dentist and get a tooth pulled and get this prescribed. And that's exactly what this company was trying to convince physicians of doing. And I would assume dentists as well. I'm not really sure how much role the dentists played, but they were trying to get people to prescribe this lollipop for things other than cancer-related pain, which is a huge no-no. I love fentanyl. I love how versatile it is. Like, it's one of the few molecules that actually can go through the skin. It's got this amazing engineering behind it. But some of these doctors lose their minds over it. I'm serious. They're like, oh, you don't want to swallow a pill? Here, I'll give you a fentanyl patch. That's not appropriate. Okay, this is for very, in fact, you have to prove that you've already had experience with an opioid before prescribing fentanyl, meaning you had to take like morphine or whatever for X amount of days, X amount of milligram, and then you can use fentanyl. And some of these doctors just love how it's a patch and they don't have to swallow a pill and you can't be doing that. Another thing, very common, is unfortunately when people are on hospice, they lose their ability to swallow. And of course, being in hospice care is quite painful 90% of the time. And what happens is physicians will start somebody on a fentanyl patch thinking, you know, this is great. They can't swallow. They're still getting good pain relief. And they can't swallow, so they're not eating. And then they lose weight. And then all this adipose tissue that they once had goes away. And what happens is the fentanyl can't be absorbed as well because the patient doesn't have enough fat on their body. What an amazing medication. Our pharmaceuticists have developed something that honestly is a product of science fiction. Who could have ever thought that you could make something that works this well? But yet they did. I'm so happy. But uh, be aware, fentanyl does have its risks in it. And it is something that you can't just use because you want to. There's lots of specific situations where it could be beneficial.